Section 1. The Game Max Axiom is cheering on his favorite high school basketball team, the Center City Titans. Oh no, they lost! Chase is their star player. Why wasn't he playing? I don't know. He led the team in scoring last week. I'm going to see why Chase wasn't in the game. Hi, Chase. Why weren't you playing? Are you hurt? I'm fine, Max. My science grade slipped. I can't play until I bring it up. Well, I can help you with science. That would be great. I have to pass my physical science test this week if I want to play in next week's game. Section 2. Moving on the court. Max, how will practicing basketball help my science grade? Science governs all the moves in the game of basketball. I thought learning the science behind basketball might help you remember better. Basketball is a game of quick action. It's often a race against the clock. When I broke away from you, I ran as fast as I could. Velocity tells us how fast we change our position. To calculate my velocity, we must divide the distance I ran by the time it took me to run it. I ran 20 feet, 6 meters, in 2 seconds. That equation would be 20 divided by 2 equals 10. So, my velocity would be 10 feet, 3 meters, per second. When you sped up to catch me, you increased your velocity. Acceleration tells us how fast our velocity changes. For both velocity and acceleration, scientists note the direction of travel. I know that's the gym's north exit, so my direction of travel was north. You're a quick study. What are you doing? I'm getting ready for your lesson in friction. Let's see how ice affects your game. I can't turn without slipping. Moving on the court requires quick changes in direction. An icy floor has less friction than a typical basketball court. Friction is the force that opposes motion when two surfaces are in contact. On a microscopic level, object surfaces are rough. When they rub together, the sides snag each other, like this Velcro. There is friction between the bottom of your shoe and the basketball court. Friction allows players to stop and change direction. But since ice has so little friction, your shoes can't grip the court, and you end up, well, there. Thanks for that painful lesson, Max. Now, let's get this ice cleaned up and work on shooting skills. Section 3. Shooting Now, we're going to switch over from the running part of the game to shooting. The angle of a shot is important, which is easily demonstrated when shooting a free throw. The trajectory of the ball is the path it takes from your hand to the basket. The shape of the trajectory is a parabola. Let's use my stop-motion glasses to go back in time a few seconds. We see the ball at the top of its trajectory. It reaches a maximum height, then gravity pulls it down. The ball doesn't usually drop straight down into the basket. The arched trajectory causes it to go in at an angle. Different approach angles cause the rim to change shape. The 30-degree entry is the hardest of the three shots to make. It's nearly a flat shot. The rim appears like a squished oval, but with a 70-degree shot, the rim appears nearly circular. The shot with a 70-degree approach angle was the easiest to make. Now it makes sense why it works that way. Now, let's study how backspin affects your shot. Backspin causes the ball to rotate backward while sailing through the air. When the ball hits the backboard, friction slows it down. Backspin spins the ball down toward the basket. With no backspin, the ball is more likely to bounce away from the basket. A ball with backspin will also hit the rim more gently. So then it's more likely to fall into the basket than to bounce off. Exactly! Nice shot! I noticed that you pushed the ball straight upward when you took that shot on the run. Why didn't you push it forward to shoot it? I don't know. My method works, though. Why don't you take another shot on the run now? This time, push forward when you shoot. Let's see what happens. Wow, that one was way off. I guess that's why I don't push the ball forward. Since you were running, the ball already had your forward motion. Pushing it made it fly forward too far and too hard. I have a friend who can explain more. Wow, what is that? Where did it come from? This is Sir Isaac Newton. 
I brought him here from the 1600s in my time machine. In 1687, he published three laws of motion. My first law is an object at rest stays at rest. An object in motion stays in motion unless a force acts on it. A force is a push or a pull. I remember that from science class. My first law is also called the law of inertia. Inertia is the tendency of an object to resist a change in motion. So, when I'm running, the basketball's inertia has forward motion. It keeps moving forward with my body. In the 1600s, Galileo dropped objects from the mast of a moving ship. From his perspective, the objects fell straight down. They landed at the bottom of the mast. Some people might have assumed the objects would have fallen behind the mast since the ship moved forward. However, the objects moved forward at the same speed as the ship. They had inertia. Jumping is an important skill in basketball. I'm sure Mr. Newton can explain what makes jumping possible. Isaac? My third law says that when one object exerts a force on another object, the second object exerts an equal and opposite force on the first. Is that the same law that says that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction? You got it! When you start to jump, your feet push down on the floor. The floor is connected to the building, which is anchored to the ground. This combination has a huge mass. Your small push doesn't move the floor at a noticeable distance. Chase exerted a downward force on the floor. According to my third law, the floor exerted an equal but opposite upward force on his feet. It is the floor's upward push on Chase's feet that caused him to soar off the ground. I believe the young man has a firm grasp on the laws of motion. It's time for me to head back. In time, as it were. Thanks again, old friend. Thanks, Mr. Uh, Newton. Um, Sir Isaac? Brooks Lee! Good to see you. Glad you could stop by. Hi, Max. I heard you wanted me to show some hot young player my slam dunk. I guess that must be you. Wow. Um, yeah. Max, you know Brooks Lee? Sure. I knew him before he was a famous basketball star. How does he soar through the air like that? He defies gravity during his slam dunks. It only looks like Brooks defies gravity. But when he leaps up, gravity immediately begins to pull him down. I'll show you with my glasses projector feature. His trajectory is a parabola. Sure. Just like when I shot a free throw, the ball traveled along a parabola. Exactly. And the amount of time a player spends in the air is called hang time. Brooks moved upward quickly when he first left the ground. His upward speed then slowed. His jump reached a high point here. Next, he began to move downward. His downward speed increased as he fell. But he spent the same amount of time going up as he spent coming down. I spent 71% of the jump time in the top half of the jump. About 29% of the jump time was in the bottom half of the jump. Most of the jump time is spent in the top half of the jump. This gives the illusion of floating in the air. So there you have it, kid. I have to go. But well, why don't you keep this ball? Good to see you, Max. You too, Brooks. Thanks, buddy. Section 4. Ball Handling Wow, Max. I can't believe you know Brooks Lee and that Newton guy and his laws. That's incredible. There is one scientific law we didn't go over. The law of conservation of energy. Funny enough, we're exhibiting it right now. Dribbling the basketball demonstrates the law of conservation of energy. This law states that energy cannot be created or destroyed, but it can be changed from one form into another. What do you mean by energy? Energy is the ability to do work. And believe it or not, there's more than one kind. Using my super science powers, I've slowed time to analyze your dribble. When the ball is at the highest point of its bounce, it has the most potential energy. Potential energy is the energy an object has due to its position. Now, let's analyze the kinetic energy in dribbling. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. As the ball drops back to the court, its potential energy changes to kinetic energy. As the ball rebounds from the floor, 
the kinetic energy is changing back to potential energy. Before I speed time back up to its usual pace, watch the ball bounce without dribbling it. Observe closely. Do you notice anything? The height that the ball bounces off the ground is a little lower each time. What do you hear? Just the ball hitting the floor. What you hear is sound energy. Some of the ball's energy was changed to sound. The temperature of the ball increased slightly after bouncing. Some of the ball's energy changed to heat. That's thermal energy. Wow, I had no idea there were so many different types of energy. The ball doesn't return to its original height, but no energy has been lost. The law of conservation of energy tells us that. The energy is simply changed into other forms, such as heat and sound. So to dribble, I must replace that lost energy with my own. Yep. Now that we've worked on dribbling, let's talk about passing. By practicing your bounce pass with both a fully inflated basketball and a slightly flat basketball, you can learn about air pressure. I notice that the flat ball doesn't bounce as high. I've frozen time to when the balls bounced off the court, and I've shrunk us down to get a closer look at them. What do you notice? The inflated ball has a much smaller deformation where it hits the ground than the flat ball. The flat ball looks like it's been punched. Whoa! Ouch! Max, where are we? What's going on here? I shrunk us down to molecular size and put us inside the fully inflated ball so you could see what goes on inside it. All of those items smacking us around are air molecules. The well-inflated basketball has more air molecules inside. The less inflated ball has fewer air molecules. These tiny particles of air are made up of atoms. What do you think about that? I think you should have transported us into the flat ball. Ouch! Point taken. Let's get out of here and back to regular size. Okay, now look. Both basketballs get squished when they collide with the floor. The collision squeezes and pushes the air molecules inside the balls. The molecules collide with each other and the inside surface of the ball. Pressure is the force over an area. Since more molecules are in the well-inflated ball, there are more collisions with the basketball's inside surface than in the flat ball. More collisions mean more force is applied to the inside area of the ball. That means the air pressure inside the well-inflated ball is greater. That's right, and that's why the well-inflated ball bounces higher. As a gas is heated, its molecules move faster. They bump into each other and spread out. The gas expands. As a gas is cooled, its molecules move slower. The gas contracts. This is why a helium balloon kept inside a cool house seems to blow up when it is taken outside. Wow, that's a hard pass. By understanding Newton's second law of motion, you can lessen the impact of a chest pass. This law tells us that the force of an object is equal to its mass times its acceleration. This is often stated as F equals M times A. The basketball has momentum when I pass it to you. Momentum is mass times velocity. It is basically mass in motion. If you remember that acceleration is the change in velocity over time, you can rewrite Newton's second law as F equals M times V divided by T. Since mass times velocity is momentum, force is the change in momentum over time. Who knew basketball involved this much math? When we write the equation as F equals M times V divided by T, we see that dividing by a larger time will make the force less. By bending your arms and bringing the basketball toward you, the time to catch the ball increases. Increasing the amount of time to catch the pass makes the impact of the pass less. The pass is easier to catch. No problem. By the way, speaking of passing, all this studying has me feeling great about passing my science test. With your new knowledge of science, I bet your basketball game will improve too.